What's up, y'all? Your boy is back. Last video, we handled spawning our player prefab, so we got our boy out in the field. But this video, we're going to be handling moving him around. We're going to gather some basic player input. This is the last video in the series, so please, if you like these, these videos and you want more of them, please tell me in the comments what I could do better, what you want to see next. Like this video and subscribe. It helps me so much. And thank you so much. Let's get to it. So that's all good. We got him out there, but we need to actually give him some legs. So to do that, we're going to get some input. So first, we're going to create a new component. We'll call this input. Well, we'll call this input component because there's already an input. And then there's input mono. And then an input system. And so first, let's handle our input component. So it's a struct. We don't need this. It's a struct. But we're going to use a different kind of uh, component data. It's I input component data. And so what this does is actually catches the input of every frame. But in order to use this on the network game, we're going to use a ghost component. And it's going to be a prefab type of uh, predicted movement, all predicted movement. So we can say predicted client, but it's all predicted. And so this is required if you want to use the I input component data and not have it you know, nonstop tell you something's wrong. This would be why if you're using I input component data and not using all predicted, it can get a little finicky. Um, we're going to need to catch our inputs. So we're going to get an int of horizontal movement and an int of vertical. So now let's go into our input mono. Oh. Now let's go to our input mono, clean it out, and let's just bake it. So let's do a public class input baker of our mono. Here we go. Let's get that abstract class in there. Get rid of this. And let's add our input component. So add component, input component. And that's easy as that. So let's go to our input system. And get rid of this. Make it a partial struct from I system. Okay, get rid of this. Let's implement that. And so here we're going to actually update in a, in a update it in the input system group. So it will only update if there are these uh, components on here. So we're going to say type of uh, ghost input system group. Remove these exceptions. And on create, we're going to require that there is a spawner. So we'll say uh, spawner. We're going to require that there is an input component. So we'll say input component. And then we're also going to require a network ID component. So we have to make sure that they actually have an ID and that they're ready to move. We don't need to we don't need to go through all the rest of the other stuff because they're kind of you know red herrings there. Really optimizing this. In the on update, we're going to catch the inputs. So we'll say uh, left oh, left is equal to input dot get key down, not input component dot get key. We'll say uh, key code dot a. We're using w a s and d, and you can't use the new input system with ECS yet. So we're going to stick with the old one. We're say left, right, up, and down. So let's change those. All right, and the keys as well. So D, W, and S. There we go. We have our inputs. And so now in classic dots fashion, we're going to do a for each loop and create a query. So here's our input. And we're going to check the system API. And we're going to run a query for anything that has a input component. And we're going to read right to that. So we're going to say uh, what is it? input component. And then also if they're local. So we'll say, there we go. There's that. Why you not work? I know why you not work. Too many, too many of these things here. All right. <laughs> All right. And now we're getting our input. We're going to read and write. So we're going to read write that. Set that to default. And so now let's check if our inputs are good. So if left, then we're going to uh, sub subtract from the horizontal value, right? So we're going to get our input dot value read write. 
dot horizontal minus equals one. If we're using right, then you know, inverse that, invert that, plus equals one. If we are going up, then we're going to do input value read right. We want the vertical plus one. And if we're going down, which is not up, but I like to skip things here. So we're going to go minus one. And now we've captured our inputs, but we still aren't moving. So we actually have to create a moving system. So let's do that really quick. So let's create a movement system. So go to systems, create a new one. We'll call it a move system. And we're going to create a new entity query. So let's go back in here. We're going to clean it up a little bit. We'll do a partial class or partial struct. Sorry, partial struct. I system. I system. Who are you? All right. There's that. Using entities and implement this baby. Let's add burst because we can get it bursty. We can get it fast. Make it faster than the flash running away from his problems. Here we go. Get that going here. All right, now we're here, there, there. Perfect. Um, and let's create a query. So we're going to want a query. Let's do builder equals new entity query builder. And we want allocator temp. Let's do that. Let's clean this baby up. And we want to make sure that we have our input. So let's do with all input component. And we need to make sure that it's a simulated uh, entity. So let's do with all simulate. And that's it. So now let's do, let's set, let's set our state. So require for update. And we'll do a state.get entity query. And we'll put in our builder. There we go. So that's all queried. Uh, we also want to make sure that this only updates in the predicted simulation group, you know, per for performance reasons here. So, and probably because something's going to break. Uh, that's the that's the status quo of dots in this at this segment right now, especially netcode. So let's do predicted system uh, predicted simulation group. So we could update and we could do this all you know synchronously. But the whole benefit of dots is to you know be able to do things like movement and after you get the inputs, move them asynchronously. So let's create a job. So we'll do a public partial struct. And we'll call this our move job. And that is from I job entity. And so here we actually do want burst compile as well. So let's add that. And so what we're going to want to get is a speed. So let's do public float speed. And we need an execute function. So let's do public void execute. And we're going to want our input component. And we want our, our transform aspect. So let's do ref transform aspect. And uh, we'll call this transform. And so basically, at this point, it's kind of a lot like normal Unity, right? So all we do is get our move, and we'll say that's a new float2. We're going to say that's input horizontal and input vertical. Now let's just normalize that, as we always did, and multiply by our speed. So uh, move, let's do math.normalize. We're using Unity Mathematics here. Normalize safe. We'll do move and we'll multiply that by our speed. And now let's just apply that. So transform.local position plus equals uh, new float three of our move.x and zero and move.y. And that's our job. So now let's run that job. So easy. Create a new move job. Let's literally all we have to do is set our speed. So let's do speed is equal to, uh, let's say, four times time dot delta time, because we always do that, independent frame rate and all. Oh, whoops. I always do this with structs. Old habits die hard. There we go. Now let's make our dependency here and run the job in parallel. So, and schedule parallel. And there we go. And so before we can move our guy around, we have to actually add the component to him. So let's do this. We want the input mono on him. 
And now we should be able to move our guy around. So let's go push play. And we have our guy moving. Magic, net code for entities. The green is the client prediction and the red is where the server is at. Something you can do to test really quick is go to the play mode tools and you know set a couple of thin skinny clients here. Let's do uh, two. I mean, we can do one, it's fine. And let's push play. And we crashed again, that's amazing. And so we crashed, but let's add those thin clients. Okay, we got one, just so you can see. We're here, we connected, and there's our other thin client, magic. And so I'm sure you really wanna build it. Not a problem, we can get this going. All you're gonna do is go to file, build settings. We're going to switch it to a dedicated server. So just switch the platform, build. I already have a build here, but just make it, create a folder called build. Select that folder, build it in there. All right. And now to build the client, we just switch back to the, this platform. Let's uh, go to player settings and make it windowed mode. So let's go resolution and presentation. Let's call it windowed. And that's fine. 1024 by 768. Just make it fit a part of your screen. Not a, not a lot. All right. Now we'll save that. Build. And in build, let's create a folder called client. Let's pop that in there. Build it again. And so now if we go to the server, let's start that up. Here's that, so it'll, run, it'll start a little command prompt. Once it's ready, now we'll go to the client and run the client one. Here we go, let's open up another one just for the sake of it. Bring it here. And as you can see, we're here. We're loaded. And here we're loaded. So we have our little client and server working in Unity Dots. So that's basically it. That's where we're stopping with this specific series. And I just wanted this to be kind of a basic intro. We're going to continue with something a little bit more advanced, but I think just having these topics covered will shorten the need in the future on the future tutorials so we can kind of get right into it. If you like this tutorial, or if you want to continue following on my next tutorial series, please just drop a like, subscribe, help me out. It'd be awesome. Watch the video. The likes really do a lot. They push me out. They help me get to more people and they help me get more comments telling me what I can do better. So thanks.